Because Tanajana Nun doesn't come very often, uh, just give a chance. If anybody has any questions you'd like to ask him, you can ask at this point. Anyone has any doubts about practice? The, que- the question was how to have metta or kindness arise when you're angry. If somebody uh, has the tendency to get angry, and particularly they have a tendency towards extreme anger to the point where they sometimes lose control and actually uh, express that anger through speech and actions. They should consider the point or the fact that all of us as human beings are all heading towards death. And that's a certainty. Everybody who's born in the world must die. We must die. Other people must die. So. We reflect like this, that if, say, somebody has made us angry, they've done or said something that has brought up anger, we reflect that they one day will have to die just like us. So there's no point holding on to anger in the mind, because we all have to go towards our death. We should consider that maybe our death might come to us today, this very afternoon. We really don't know, it's uncertain more profitable, more useful to make our minds peaceful today, right now, than to hold on to angry thoughts. Just think, if you did die today when you're, and you're angry and with strong anger in your mind, that might be a cause for you to be reborn in a place of suffering because of that anger. Better to let it go now. Deep down that's a much more important goal than whatever the anger is telling us to do. Another way is to make a vow or a a resolution every morning when you get up. First thing, resolve not to give in to anger. You say, whoever does anything, says anything that would make me angry today, I'm not going to give in to anger and become angry with that person. You make your resolution, you stick to it, and you keep making that resolution every day. Learn how to refuse to give in to your own angry thoughts. And on the positive side, you can also cultivate the meditation on the theme of loving-kindness. You can do it as a recollection or a reflection every morning. Again, you get up and say, may I be happy and well and free from anger. You can do this as a mantra that you bring up from time to time. You recollect this mantra and, and recite it to yourself. You can also spread the feeling of loving-kindness towards others. Again, you do it as a regular practice, maybe first thing in the morning, develop this feeling of kindness towards others. As you do that regularly, then that has a very powerful effect on the mind. When I notice I'm getting angry, I know that I'm angry, but now that I know that I'm angry, I, I feel even more angry that I'm angry, and this gives me even more suffering. What should I do to fix this? If one does have anger rising, the important thing is to establish mindfulness. Just know that experience. And if mindfulness is strong and you're able to know that this is an experience of anger and there's suffering, just let it end right there. Don't encourage it, don't indulge it. If you do let your mind stray off into thoughts, say craving where you want the anger to end quickly, well that will increase your suffering. The thing to do to remedy that is to always turn to your meditation object. If anger has arisen and you're becoming aware of it, that's the time to turn to your meditation object. Whatever meditation object you are using regularly, that you're familiar with, turn to it at that time, focus on it, and that will be the quickest way to allow that anger to subside and pass away from your mind. When I'm practicing metta, I seem to find I gloss over practicing metta for myself because when I do, I feel like I'm being selfish and one-sided. So in the end, I don't want to practice towards myself. What should I do? One should practice this in stages. If, if you're doing some metta meditation and you find that it's hard to have a thought of kindness towards oneself for whatever reason, 
the best thing is to just postpone that, not think of oneself first. First of all, think of those people that one loves and respects, and that those feelings, those qualities arise naturally and easily, maybe parents or someone and uh, develop the meditation towards those people first so that you had a very strong and warm feeling of kindness. Then move on to more neutral people. Uh, for example, Hannah Chan said, if you want to practice metta towards neutral people, meaning anybody, could be strangers, just anybody, might be just people in a certain direction, you say, everybody in front of me, or however many kilometers in front of me, or to the left, to the right of me. I wish them all well and happiness. Um, and you practice in this way until you're used to and skilled at developing metta towards those you love and respect in particular, and then to more neutral people. And then when you feel more um, settled, then you start turning and developing your metta towards yourself. And so you do it. Uh, most most te meditation teachers will instruct to always start with oneself, then go to others. But in this case, you go to others first, then come back to yourself. And finally, having learnt to develop a, a warm feeling towards yourself and a really honestly warm feeling towards yourself, then in the last part of that practice, you develop it towards people you find difficult to have any kindness for, or enemies or people one has problems with. But there's no point in turning to them until one's overcome the obstacle with just developing metta towards oneself. Mm -hmm. Does it in stages like that. How do you find the right teacher along the path? There's a teacher, uh, has to be someone who obviously is following the path of practice that the Buddha uh, advised. Uh, and as able to explain that path of practice to others, so they both practice it as an example and then they're expl able to explain the path of virtue, concentration, wisdom. Um, and if what that teacher says is in line with what you understand from your studies and understanding of the Buddhist teachings and it doesn't diverge from that, and that they're an example of that in their own practice, well, that's that's a good indication that person can be a teacher for you. And also, in, in particular, if a teacher, having given you teachings, explained things, cleared up your doubts, and you feel that you have more peace, you've gained more peace, more understanding from the teachings that teacher have given, well, again, that's an indication that, that the teacher is a suitable teacher for you. Um, but the Ajahn also pointed out teachers aren't always, don't always have to be people. We can also learn from our experiences and just from the nature and the world around us. For instance, a tree can be our teacher because, um, the world around us is, is displaying the truth, the Dhamma to us all the time. It's just whether we realize it or not. So a, tr a tree can be a teacher in the sense you just observe and notice a tree, how it changes over time, how the leaves uh, grow up, they come, they come out from shoots, they grow up, become lush leaves, and then after a while they shrivel, they fade, they drop off that tree and go to the ground and go back into the earth. Just by watching a tree like that, that tree becomes your teacher because it's pointing out the Dhamma to you, and if it gets you that reflection gets you to see the impermanence, the unsatisfactoriness, the lack of self, in this world, then that tree is a suitable teacher as well. So one should see that there's that opportunity to receive teachings from many things. <laughs>